Hey, hi everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Bart Schilkort from the uh, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. I will be presenting some work that I did together with a colleague of mine, Wasse Tonde, on calibrating ETS data, for which we developed a Python package as well. Um, so our issue was that we wanted a bit more of a robust calibration and some functionalities that we desired were lacking in previous utilities. Uh, first, the, the uh, estimate of uncertainty along your cable and in time. And uh, that translates to confidence intervals of temperature as well. You can use this information to do a weighted calibration, which I'll come back to later. And we want to uh, estimate these parameters using measurements from all time steps. So not just calibrating each single measurement in time separately, but all together. And we need, like uh, Scott mentioned, some advanced routines to, for example, correct for step losses. And lastly, we wanted this to be a free uh, open source software, which is available online for everyone to use and look at and modify or integrate in your own routines. So, so to start with, we need to define what we can set as a constant in time. Um, the others already previously talked about this. Gamma should be relatively constant. It's mostly a material property of the optical fiber. So depending on the exact makeup of your fiber, it can change slightly. However, on long time scales as your fiber degrades, it could change a bit. But generally that's not a worry of us in our setups, especially on daily or weekly time scale sets, uh, basically constant. So the C parameter will vary in time. Uh, as the TTS device's properties change with temperature or as the connectors vary in temperature. And lastly, um, the different uh, attenuation can be constant in time. However, only when strain remains constant. And this depends on the time scale you're looking at and the environment you're measuring. For example, as some people do, you can have a fiber placed in, on a stream bed However, if some high flow passes by and your cable shifts and you have sediment shifting or branches, um, the strain will change that the fiber is experiencing. And that means that uh, the differential attenuation will change. So you'll have to break up your calibration in steps to deal with this changing differential attenuation. So the double-ended calibration as it's nice to be able to estimate or actually calculate the differential attenuation, which is very useful as it will vary along the length of your cable as your cable experiences bends or tension. And the most important thing is that it leads to an unknown uncertainty in single element measurements. You don't know how exactly the lack of information on differential attenuation is affecting your measurements. And in longer cables, this error will add up and uh, uh, become bigger, while in short setups, it generally is not a big issue. But luckily, we can actually just calculate the differential attenuation, as we know that the temperature from the forward channel and the backward channel should be the same at the same point in the fiber. I don't, I'm not going to go over the equations here. It's a bit too long, but uh, there's a uh, explained in detail in some other papers. So now back to the confidence intervals. There are two main factors affecting the uncertainty in your final temperature estimation. Um, the first one being the noise in the Stokes and Eddy-Stokes measurements from the uh, random distribution of how many photons you get back, uh, like optical shot noise. And there can be some uncertainty from your estimation of your parameters. So how we deal with the noise in the Stokes and Stokes measurements in our uh, method is that we take the measured Stokes and anti-Stokes intensities along the cable and in time, and use the fact that reference sections and the temperature are known and that they are very constant. With this, we can derive the relationship between the signal intensity and the variance of the Stokes and anti-Stokes signals. And as this is mostly property of the DTS detectors themselves, 
it doesn't really depend on the channel or um, along your fiber. So you can make this relationship and it will hold for uh, your, along your entire cable, forward and backward channels, uh, although it can vary a bit through time. Uh, so by determining this relationship, we can then actually calculate the measurement uncertainty in time and space along your entire cable. So you again have to use this for the calibration routine. Uh, so again, the same equation where you have the temperature of your known locations, gamma parameter, the log of your uh, Stokes power of anti-Stokes power, C parameter in your integrated differential attenuation. You can rewrite this. So you put your Stokes observations on the left-hand side and the other uh, variables on the right-hand side. And this is uh, then rewritten as a linear combination of your unknown parameters, which you can then put into a very good matrix. So we put all the observations uh, and unknowns into this matrix where you have uh, your Raman observations, all the reference temperatures and their location along the fiber and the calibration parameters. And you'll also eventually have some residuals as your calibration is not perfect. So we can solve this system with a least squares routine and we can weigh the observations by the measurement uncertainty at each location. So from this, we will then get calibration parameters, your A, and the covariance between the parameters as well, as well as any residuals we have in calibration when solving the matrix. So these are big 3D matrices containing all information in space and time of all reference sections. So then lastly, we calculate the calibration temperature with these parameters that we derived and all Stokes observations along the entire cable and in time. And we'll calculate the uh, confidence intervals using the uncertainty in the Stokes and anti-Stokes measurements and the calibrated parameters and the covariance. We'll have to use a Monte Carlo simulation to make a distribution of all of this. And from those statistics, we can then derive, for example, a 95% confidence interval. Uh, on the right here, you see an example from our uh, paper where you see an entire temperature trace uh, over these 100 meters with uh, two baths that we used for calibration and some ambient section. Uh, the estimated temperature is here in the black line and in blue it shows uh, the confidence interval in this case. As the confidence interval is actually quite small compared to the jumps in temperature, at the bottom you see it as compared to each reference section. And you see that it fits very well with the uh, actual data points that we find in these reference sections. So about 95% of the data points in the uh, calibration and reference paths fall within this 95% confidence interval. So you can use this confidence interval data and um, uncertainty in other analysis. For example, when you're comparing it with models to see if how much they are in agreement. And an added bonus of this weighted calibration is that we can uh, improve the estimation of the double-ended uh, methods. So um, you saw before that if you average, you, know, you take a normal mean of the forward channel and backward channel, the least noisy will be in the center here to know that that's the arithmetic mean, while close to your device on the forward and the backward end, it will be noisier. However, you can average these two, or take the mean of these two by weighing them with the known variance, which will lead to an optimal estimation of your temperature. So you get rid of the problem that you have a lot of noise near your machine with double-ended measurements. So there's no really, not an excuse anymore not to use the uh, double-ended. Um, and besides that, if you have a bit of a noisy calibration bath, uh, it will also affect your calibration less. Uh, you can note here probably also that the uh, forward channel seems to have a higher uncertainty than the backward channel. We often see this 
as the connectors, uh, one connector can be slightly more lossy than the other connector in a machine. And they'll both vary a bit over time as well. One minute left? About a minute left. Okay. So uh, advanced routines, uh, you can correct for step losses by taking them kind of into the calibration. They can be asymmetrical is what we found, which is, uh, don't think mentioned before that often. Um, and they can vary over time. However, we can correct for this also using matching temperatures, especially if you have a duplex cable with a turnaround supplies, the two fibers in the same point along the cable should have the exact same temperature. So you don't actually need an extra bath there. It doesn't hurt to have more AI uh, reference sections, but it's not uh, required necessarily. So the uses code, you can just get it from uh, Python package index, one line install, uh, in the Python 3, you just only need a few lines to actually uh, load and calibrate codes. This is an example with uh, Selixa files. You can just feed the little XML files, define your reference sections, and run a simple calibration. If you don't want to work in Python, that's fine. You can just export your data as an NCDF file and work in MATLAB or whatever you want. So, short overview of the so, server, like what we can do with our uh, Python package. It's open source, fully documented codes. We have continuous integration tests for reliability. Any changes to the code will be tested if they actually uh, still work and properly calibrate data. We provide confidence intervals. You have these advanced routines that you can use to mostly salvage data sets. You don't want to rely on them, but if you have missing paths or other problems, you can use them to actually salvage your data and still get good results. Uh, we have tools for merging and aligning double end measurements, and we support the data formats of many manufacturers. And lastly, as it's Python, open source, and GitHub, you can integrate this into any different code base. For example, PyFox from PyLite. So here's where to find us, the publication discussing the methods and how to contact us. 